opening hymn is number 427. Blessed be God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Please join me in the collect for purity. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you the secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what our Lord Jesus Christ says. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments depend all the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. <clears throat> Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Let us pray. O God, who before the passion of your only begotten Son revealed his glory upon the holy mountain, grant that we, beholding by faith the light of his countenance, may be strengthened to bear our cross and be changed into his likeness from glory to glory. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, 
who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the reading of the lessons. A reading from the book of Exodus, chapter 24, beginning with the 12th verse. The Lord said to Moses, Come up to me on the mountain and wait there, that I may give you the tablets of the stone, with the law and the commandment, which I have written for their instruction. So Moses rose with his assistant Joshua, and Moses went up into the mountain of God, and he said to the elders, Wait here for us until we return to you. And behold, Aaron and her are with you. Whoever has a dispute, let him go to them. Then Moses went up on the mountain, and the cloud covered the mountain. The glory of the Lord dwelt on Mount Sinai, and the cloud covered it six days. And on the seventh day he called to Moses out of the midst of the cloud. Now the appearance of the glory of the Lord was like a devouring fire on top of the mountain in the sight of the people of Israel. Moses entered the cloud and went up on the mountain. And Moses was on the mountain 40 days and 40 nights. It's the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm selected this morning is Psalm 99, beginning with the first verse. It is found on page 398 in the Book of Common Prayer and in your bulletin. The Lord is King. Let the peoples tremble. He sits between the cherubim. Let the earth shake. The Lord is great in Zion. And high above all my peoples. They shall give thanks unto his name, which is great and wonderful. The Lord is seated in my heart, a king who loves justice. You have established equity. You have executed judgment and righteousness in Jacob. O magnify the Lord our God, and fall down before his footstool, for he is holy. Moses and Aaron among his priests, and Samuel among those who call upon his name. And they called upon the Lord, and he heard them. He spoke to them out of the cloudy pillar. They kept their testimonies, and the law that they gave them. You heard them, O Lord our God. You forgave them, O God. Yet punish their evil doings. O magnify the Lord our God, and worship him upon his holy hill. For the Lord our God is holy. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Philippians, chapter 3, beginning with the seventh verse. But whatever gain I had, I counted as loss for the sake of Christ. Indeed, I count everything as loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord. For his sake I have suffered the loss of all things, and count them as rubbish, in order that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own, that comes from the law, but that which comes through faith in Christ, the righteousness from God that depends on faith, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and may share his sufferings, becoming like him in his death, that by any means possible, I may attain the resurrection from the dead. Not that I have already obtained this or am already perfect, but I press on to make it my own because Christ Jesus has made me his own. Brothers, I do not consider that I have made it my own, but one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and strain forward to what lies ahead, I press on toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of Christ, of God in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Jesus, Lord, to be revealed. 
gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. Matthew. Glory, Glory to you, Lord Christ. And after six days, Jesus took with him Peter and James and John, his brother, and led them up a high mountain by themselves. And he was transfigured before them, and his face shone like the sun, and his clothes became white as light. And behold, there appeared to them Moses and Elijah talking with him. And Peter said to Jesus, Lord, it is good that we are here. If you wish, I will make three tents here, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He was still speaking when, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them. And a voice from the cloud said, This is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. When the disciples heard this, they fell on their faces and were terrified. But Jesus came and touched them, saying, Rise and have no fear. And when they lifted up their eyes, they saw no one but Jesus only. And as they were coming down the mountain, Jesus commanded them, Tell no one the vision until the Son of Man is raised from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, the Lord Christ. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. I have always been amazed by someone who has the gift of writing, particular, particularly authors of nonfiction and fictional books. The truly good authors are not only able to keep a reader's attention, they are also capable of making each chapter flow smoothly into the next one. They can also make each chapter relate to the preceding chapters, so there is this incredible flow throughout the text. That ability truly amazes me. It is even more amazing when someone can write not one book, but a series of books and make the last one relate all the way back to the first one. It's an incredible gift, and I'm certain that I don't possess this gift. <laughs> However, I do see this gift in the author of the Gospel of Matthew as it relates to our reading this morning. He accomplishes it in subtle ways that not only pique the reader's attention, they also support the theological points he wants the reader to comprehend and understand. And the first example of the author using this technique involves the first four words of the reading we just heard. And after six days. Now immediately, the reader is thinking, six days after what? Okay. So what, we, what we're called to do is look back into, the, into chapter 16. And in that chapter, we see two very important events. The first one involves Jesus first asking the disciples two questions. And in this first question, Jesus asked the disciples, who do, who do the crowds say that the Son of Man is? The disciples respond, well, some say Elijah, some say John the Baptist, some say Jeremiah, or, some, or a prophet of old. But then Jesus turns the tables and says, who do you say that the Son of Man is? And Peter replies, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Peter receives great praise from Jesus and proclaims him to be the rock upon which he will build his church. The author has used his technique for the theological purpose of reminding the reader of who Jesus truly is. He has proclaimed the Messiah the son of the living God. <coughs> At the same time, the author wants to remind the reader of what happened next in Peter's life. After Peter makes his great proclamation, Jesus begins to tell the disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things at the hands of the elders, the chief priests, and the teachers of the law. That is the <coughs> entire religious authority. He must be killed, and on the third day, he will rise again. Peter can't stand what Jesus is saying. So he deliberately goes over, grabs Jesus, pulls him aside, and starts to rebuke him. And Jesus, what does Jesus do? Peter is thinking of 
Jesus as the Messiah in the, in the worldly terms that he has been taught for his entire life. Okay? So he's not thinking in the ways of God, in the way of God, but in the ways of the world. Jesus does go, Jesus rebukes Peter. He goes so far as to call him Satan. So, once again, the author wants to remind the reader of who Jesus truly is. I am the son of the living God. And to make the point very clear, he begins the event of the transfiguration with those four words, and after six days. He wants us to go back and see what Peter, had, what Peter did. He wants us to understand that what, and if we've got that juxtaposition. At one moment, Peter is proclaiming Jesus is the son of God. The next minute, he's rebuking him for what Jesus is saying he has to do. He wants the reader to put those two events side by side as now they're getting ready to go up the mountain for the transfiguration. So Jesus invites Peter, James, and John to ascend the mountain with him. And when they reach the summit, Jesus is transfigured before them. His face shines like the sun. His clothes become as white as light. And Jesus stands before them in all of his glory. Can we imagine what that event must have been like? The reader, the reader immediately should recall the face of Moses after he had his visit with God on the holy mountain. Remember, he had to wear a veil from then on because his face shone. And then, who should appear but... Moses and Elijah, and they are speaking with Jesus. They appear with him briefly. We have no idea what they said, and they disappear into the cloud when the cloud comes upon them. But this event is important because it points the reader not backward, but forward. Elijah was supposed to return before the Messiah, and that role has been fulfilled by John the Baptist. The coming of the Messiah has occurred. The beginning of the coming of God's kingdom is now arriving. The eschatological role of Moses is filled by Jesus. Jesus fulfills his ministry as the suffering servant. In his suffering, he will take on the sin of the whole world, restoring our broken relationship with God at that time and forevermore. The author causes the reader to be both in the, both in the present and the transfiguration and looking forward to the age to come. Furthermore, his description makes absolute the identity of Jesus as the son of the living God. I mean, the shining face, the white clothes, talking to Moses and Elijah, how much more clear does it have to be? If the reader isn't paying attention now, they'll never get it. Still, the author makes the truth of God's salvation through Jesus even more clear. The cloud descends over Jesus, Moses, Elijah, and the three disciples. And from the cloud, the disciples hear the very voice of God. And he says to them, this is my beloved son with whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. Once again, we are being taken back in time. We're being taken back to the beginning of Jesus' ministry when he is baptized. And God says almost the exact same thing. He does say, this is my beloved son with whom I am well pleased. So here we are at... We've seen God speak to Jesus and to, uh, to, to him at his baptism, at the beginning of his ministry. Now Jesus is going on his way to Jerusalem, and God the Father is speaking to him again, telling him, you are my beloved son, with you I am well pleased. But then he adds three words, doesn't he? These three words are not for Jesus. They're directly to the disciples. Listen to him. So they are supposed to listen to what Jesus says. They're not, these three words are not a request or a suggestion from God to the disciples. It is a command. Jesus has told them he must go to Jerusalem. He must be handed over to the religious authorities. He must die. And he will rise again on the third day. Jesus' life, death, and resurrection are the foundations of the Christian faith. The author confirms through the sharing of the event of the transfiguration that Jesus is the Messiah, he is the Son of the living God, he is the Lord, and he is our Savior. He is the Savior of the whole world, and there is no other. But 
still, there's one more thing for us to consider. This day is the last Sunday in Epiphany. Epiphany is the season of the church year when we recognize that the light of the world is among us. He has come for all, Gentile and Jew, man or woman, rich or poor. In just a few days, we will begin the season of Lent. And in this season, we acknowledge our own mortality and our own sinfulness. But we also begin a journey. It is a journey with Christ. We travel with him and the disciples to Jerusalem. And on this journey, Jesus teaches us of what is to come. We are reminded of his passion and his death. We are reminded that Christ bore our sins for us on the cross. We are reminded that he took our place because he loves us so much. We are reminded that he restored the broken relationship that we were unable to do through his free offering of himself for us. We are reminded that we are to come to the foot of the cross and offer ourselves as faithful disciples to Jesus. And as faithful disciples, we go into the world proclaiming what Jesus accomplished for us to everyone that we meet. But we don't stop at the cross. We also look to, we look forward, and we proclaim Jesus' resurrection. Jesus did die for us on the cross, absolutely. He also rose again, opening for us the way to everlasting life, opening the way for our salvation. We proclaim the good news of Jesus. We proclaim his life. We proclaim his death. We proclaim his resurrection. We do not worship a dead man in a tomb. We worship a risen Lord. His tomb is empty, and he is preparing a place for us in the very presence of our Heavenly Father. It is this point that the author of Matthew is making to all who read this text. I pray that we never take it lightly, but we give God the glory for what he has accomplished for us through his beloved son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Please stand and let us confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father of the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, the law that is visible and invisible. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, eternally begotten Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate in the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in the course of the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord of the of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the church and for the world, saying, Hear our prayer. For the peace of the whole world and for the well being and unity of the people of God. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For our Archbishop, for Chip, our Bishop, and for all the clergy and people of the diocese and congregation. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For all those who proclaim the gospel at home and abroad, 
and for all who teach and disciple others. Lord, in your mercy. For our brothers and sisters in Christ who are persecuted for their faith. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For our nation, for those in authority, and for all in public service. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For all those who are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For all those who have departed this life in a certain hope of the resurrection, especially Jim Burns, in thanksgiving, let us pray. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Most gracious God, we lift up to you those on our parish prayer list, on the daughters of the king prayer list, and those who are foremost on our hearts and minds this day. Chipsy and GP, Dan, Diane, Bob, Elise, Jerry, Penny, Michael, John, Arden, Aunt Doug, Tim and Penny, Bill and Jean, Marie. Liz and Lanier. For Lily. Yeah. And the Rainey family. For Charlotte and the uh. Burns family. Uh. We ask you, Lord, to touch them with your healing hand and with the presence of your Holy Spirit, restoring them to health and wholeness of mind, body, and spirit in accordance with their needs and in accordance with your will. We ask for your protection for all first responders, all those in the medical professions, firefighters, police officers, all those in our school systems. And we pray for peace in our world. Please bring peace in your, in your peace, the fullness of your kingdom. All these things we ask of you in the name of your Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, grant these our prayers for the sake of Jesus Christ, our only mediator and advocate, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us humbly confess our sins to Almighty God. We confess that we have sinned against you. In thought, word, and deed, by what we have done, and by what we have left undone, we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we only repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may abide in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who in his great mercy has promised forgiveness of sins to all those who sincerely <coughs> repent and with true faith turn to him, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Hear the word of God to all who truly turn to him. Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. The saying is trustworthy and deserving of full acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. If anyone sins, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. He is the propitiation for our sins and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. Please say it. Greet one another in the name of the Lord. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And with your God's peace.
shake his hand and he crawled in my arms. <laughs> so, um, I know, I know, I know. Just hang on a minute, okay? We'll get those after the service. There's cookies over there, I know. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> you saw them over my shoulder. Okay. All right. Um, a couple of quick announcements. First of all, um, Shrove Tuesday, Pancake Supper. We're going to have, uh, we're gonna, uh, the menu is going to be in, uh, including um, pancakes, scrambled eggs, uh, Weinberg sausage, uh, um, bacon um, for Bobby, um, <laughs> um, uh, milk, orange juice, <laughs> tea, um, and coffee. Uh, we're going to start at 5 o'clock because we know there are some people who don't like to drive after dark. So if, the, if you're one of those individuals, please come early. We have a few individuals who are that we know cannot make it that live um, in, the, in the area, so we're going to um, get their plates um, made and delivered to their homes first. That's the, that's the first ones out of the box, um, no pun intended. And um, but uh, if you know someone that you think might uh, enjoy having um, having their dinner that night, you want to take, take uh, dinner to them. Please know we'll fix it for them, and you can you can take it to them. Um, we're gonna we're gonna cook the sausage and the. Um, and the uh, bacon off um, off site. So if anyone wants to uh, cook a little bit, I'm going to pick up all this all those supplies tomorrow. Um, let me know if you want to help cook bacon or um, you really don't want that bacon or sausage. <laughs> um, and, and help me at home. I don't want I don't want the grease in the building. So um, then um, we're going to cook the pancakes and the eggs here. All right. Services for Ash Wednesday, um, 12 noon and 6 p.m. So uh, please try and make it to one of those. That's Holy Communion with the Imposition of Ashes, all right? Um, so um, we'll, uh, and then the other, the other thing that, but there are a couple of other announcements we need to make. Um, the first one is, this is our prayer list. And we have put, we're asking you, if you have put somebody on the prayer list, please sign your name by it so that we know who put, who's, who's done that. There's some names that have been on there a long time. We don't know who put them. We don't know who, um, all the ones that are, that are being put on. Where this is the old prayer list. Now what we're doing is if you call in to put someone on the prayer list, we're putting the person's name and your name on there so we can ch check back with you and see how that, that's going. Um, I mean, we will we'll pray for anybody, but if they're well, we don't want them on the on the prayer list for healing. Um, okay, this is a sign up for the Shrove Tuesday pancake um, dinner so that we can. Um, have an idea of how many people are coming. If you know somebody you want to get a plate for, add them on the list. And finally, the bishop is coming on March uh, 19th, and we're having a reception for him afterwards. Um, we would like to have a point person to um, uh, organize. Uh, we're, we've, got a, we're, we've got a list of foods together that we want to get for, um, uh, uh, for that event, but we just want a point person to kind of take charge and make sure that Make sure that everybody is um, everybody signed in. Uh, that we've got everything coming. So one person just to coordinate, make sure that everybody's there. If you would like to um, help with that uh, particular event, please um, let me know. Okay. Are there any other announcements for the good of the community? Good morning. Um, if you have not had an opportunity and want to sign up for the Pray for Me campaign, either to be a prayer champion or to have your family. Um, or students prayed for, please make sure you sign up. And next Saturday, uh, next Sunday after service, we're going to have our like kickoff luncheon. So if you do, part if you are participating, I really appreciate it if you would come and attend so that you can meet the people who are praying for you, so they can meet you, um, start building those relationships and connections. Um, we're going to be starting a sixth through eighth grade um, youth group Bible study night starting March first. Um, I think it's going to be at 6 o'clock. Um, so if you know of anybody um, in those grades that might be interested in it, let me know. Um, and I also have, for families, um, a practicing Lent devotional book um, and a coloring book. So um, families 
Please make sure you get them. They start on Wednesday, Ash Wednesday, and it goes through Easter. So for you to have that in plenty of time to get started. Thank you. Any mails? Yes, please. Good morning. Uh, Saturday at 11 o'clock, we'll be having uh, Stations of the Cross. It'll be Mary's Way of the Cross. Uh, the daughters are, uh, will be doing the readings, and everybody is uh, invited to come. We will also be doing the Stations of the Cross on Fridays at, at, during Lent at 12 noon here. So, all right. You ready? I, I haven't learned how to do this with one hand, so. <laughs> he knows mom is going to be much stricter on him than I am. yourselves treasures on earth, where moth and rust are showing, where thieves break in and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust destroys, and where the thieves, where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also.
the greatness and the power and the glory and the victory and the majesty. For everything in heaven and on earth is yours. Yours is the kingdom, O Lord, and you are exalted as head above all. All things come from you, O Lord. And of your own have we given you. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right, our duty and our joy, always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Because in the mystery of the word made flesh, you have caused a new light to shine in our hearts, to give the knowledge of your glory in the face of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, to forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, 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 Lord God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself, and, we, and when we had sinned against you and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent your only Son, Jesus Christ, into the world for our salvation. By the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, he became flesh and dwelt among us. In obedience to your will, he stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself once for all, that by his suffering and death, we might be saved. By his resurrection, he broke the bonds of death, trampling hell and Satan under his feet. As our great high priest, he ascended to your right hand in glory, that we might come with confidence before the throne of grace. On the night he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, Jesus gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this in remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. And we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your word and Holy Spirit to be for your people, the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Sanctify us also that we may worthily receive this holy sacrament and be made one body with him, that he may dwell in us and we in him. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection unto your Christ and bring us with all your saints into the joy of your heavenly kingdom, where we shall see our Lord face to face. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, o Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Amen. We do not presume to come to this short table of merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your own and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table, but you are the same Lord, whose character is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed with his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him, 
and be in us. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on them in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
137 in the Book of Common Prayer. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for leading us to the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord, to him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of Jesus Christ. I'm messing this up. <laughs> the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen.
Lord. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Thanks, Thanks to God. God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Yeah. 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 Yeah.